The group sells. Please contact Bill Hunter or Donna Douglas. No. And they are both here today. Thank you for your support. Amen. Okay, now for the questions. Are you ready to praise and worship God? Yes! successfully and safely completed, and we pray that you graciously watch over those farmers yet to complete their harvest. Grant them favorable weather conditions and keep them safe. Grant them, I'm sorry, where there is anxiety, give peace. Where there is depression, restore hope. Where there is economic uncertainty, grant protection. Life-giving God, we trust in your faithfulness and your promise to abide with us always. So, we are bold to pray that joy and gladness be restored to our orchards and farms and ranches. We pray in the name of Jesus, in whom we have our hope and salvation. Amen. Now please remain standing for the opening hymn.
Good morning, church. Good morning. It is good to see you. Before we get into anything too deeply today, I want to pause and lift the president up in prayer. Would you pray with me? This morning we come and once again the realness of what this pandemic is and can do has hit close to home. We pray for our first family, and as they are being watched and treated, I pray that the symptoms and the illness will be slight. I pray for the severity of this to pass over them, and that as a country, we will rally around his health and good news for a total recovery. We begin this because we know that we live in a blessed, blessed land. I thank you for the United States of America and for who we are and how we do it, even though confusing and sometimes perplexing. God, I ask not only for you to bless the United States, but for you to bless all of us here on earth. Be with our leaders. Help us find peaceable resolutions. And I so dare to pray this in the strong and holy name of your one and only Son. His name is Jesus. And all of God's people say, Amen. We're on our third round of those wonderful solo communion cups. And I can feel the excitement in the air that you want to get right to it. I do want to get to communion. I uh, want to put a kind of plant a bug in the usher's ears. We will probably need a basket if we don't have those to collect the empties. So I just, I, I know last month we uh, weren't on that. I'll try to be on it this morning, okay? So let's start in a really helpful, helpful way. Keeping your masks on, look at those around you and say the three words that make this place come to life when you tell the other, God loves you. Go ahead. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Hmm. What a wonderful opportunity for us to find a new start this morning. That's what Jesus has done in the Eucharist. And we are all mindful of that night in which he gathered with not only the 12, I don't think there were just 12 there, there were lots of lovers in that room. People who loved what God was doing through Jesus. Monumental was his task. Not once did he blink. So for you and I, we need to take an opportunity to go to the one who loves us first and most, confess our sins, and then we will continue. So let's be in an attitude of confession and prayer. We confess to you, O oh God, that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. And each individual in this room can find that place, or if it is me, places where I fell short of sharing your love and glory. I'm asking this morning on behalf of us all that you would send your Holy Spirit to us to reconcile where we have fallen short and to draw us back into that place where we are in a place of joyful obedience. We ask that you forgive us our sin, that you free us from the oppression of that sin, and lead us into a new place, 
a new place where we are in love with you more deeply, more fully. Hear the confessions of these, your sinners. Amen. We know that on that night he took the cup and he took the bread. Have you got a minute? Really, I've got to tell you about my bread. Okay. My bread? Yeah, here. I was doing a children's sermon once, and uh, the basic message was that God can do anything. How many of you believe that? God can do anything. Uh, after that little children's time, the following week, I received a bag of sawdust. And the little girl said, my dad said if God can do anything, have God make this sawdust become a board again. I didn't want to back down from that challenge. So this was when Gorilla Glue was first coming out on the market. How many remember that? Sure. So I got a big bottle of Gorilla Glue and a loaf pan. And the sawdust was over the top of this three pound loaf pan. I sprayed it down with uh, cooking spray. And then I put about half inch of Gorilla Glue in the bottom and I poured all that sawdust in there and I started tamping the sawdust. And when I would need more glue, I would put glue and when I needed more sawdust, this started about that tall. And Gorilla Glue and sawdust and God put the board back together again. So I think of the lessons we learned God can do all things. Amen? Okay, is that enough of a sermon for you today? Just check it. So that's the story of my bread this morning. May I share with you that you are all invited to this table. If you don't have one of these communion packs, raise your hand. Would love to get one in your hands. If you fidget with the pointy end, you follow me the pointy end, there are two layers. There is a cellophane layer that separates from the purple tin layer. Okay, I say that because it's important for us to do that to get to the wafer. Yeah, they're trying to trip us up, aren't they? Uh, we're going to, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and get your wafer out right now so we can be ready when the time comes to do communion together this morning. Okay, just hold it up if, if you can so I can see you got it and that God knows you're ready. All right, anybody still having trouble? Okay. When I bless the bread, we'll eat it. And then you can peel off the other tab and you'll be able to drink right after your wafer, okay? I don't want you to spill this on your clothes. So, remember on that night Jesus took the bread? I remember reading this story. And it's as if he looked right at me and said, Gary, this is my body broken for you. That's what he's doing for all of us. So, this is... Christ's body broken for us. Take ye and eat. You can go ahead and peel the other layer back. You don't have to take it off. Just get enough to where you can get to it. He then took the one cup and he gave thanks to God. And God blessed that. And he said to you and I, this is the cup that is poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sin. Each time you drink this, remember me. So in the name of Jesus Christ, do this in remembrance of him. Pray with me. God, you have, through your son's body and blood, reconciled the whole church, that we might be a force in the world, changing things in your name. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for communion. 
Continue to bless our service. This is a God moment, and we are blessed to be in it. Amen.
Uh, the scripture lesson uh, for today is Matthew 21, verses 35-46, and if you can, if you're able, please stand. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to him, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone is the builder, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on the stone will be broken to, pe to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <laughs> Sunday school last week, Marcia asked if we had had a teacher that deeply influenced our life. The question was, who was your favorite teacher? <clears throat> lots of answers, lots of uh, educational answers. Uh, some of us answered with relatives that were close to us. Just a whole mirage of different people that taught us and teach us. And I had uh, mentioned that academically, the teacher I believe that I looked up to the most was uh, Charles Crowley. Charlie Crowley. He was our ag teacher and uh, just a wonderful, wonderful man. Should have got an amen right then. <laughs> but as I thought about this in sermon preparation, it was uh, something that Charlie said to us as individuals. He said, if you don't like what's going on, don't complain about it. No. Do something about it. As I have matured, I wholly lean into doing something about it, not just sitting there complaining. The hitch in that get along is this. We don't know where to begin to do something about it. Uh, in the midst of this pandemic, what do I do about it? Well, I'm leaning towards listening to the science and the experts. Uh, I don't want to fly with my gut on this one. Be it right or wrong, I'm thinking the social guidelines will help everyone if we would adhere to them. Whether or not I'm buying into the pandemic or not, what is going to what is going to be hurt if I wear a mask? If I practice staying six feet apart? If I practice those things, hand washing, using sanitizer? It can only help, I think. And I'm, I'm not trying to start a, a feud here with you all that think otherwise. I'm just leaning into doing something about it. Although it may be small and it, it may seem minute, it will have a huge 
reaction to what is going on. I am trying to lean and learn through these current events, and I mean all current events today. Social attitude, the pandemic, the way people are grieving. Uh, I, I have a real heightened sense that folks are going to have to grieve after we get through this pandemic. Maybe it's because I'm a pastor and I'm on those front lines of helping people say goodbye to the loved ones who have died. But we aren't grieving the way we once did, are we? Look at the way we, we are doing funerals. Uh, many of the services are graveside. So I think there's going to be some other things we can do as Christians later. Uh, we just buried the, the matriarch of, of our funeral dinners. We, we just buried her, and I'm thinking, this is just Gary thinking, we couldn't even have a dinner for her family. And you know what? I like food. I don't know about you, but things happen when we sit down. They, they had a little private dinner out there at the farm, and you know, I'm thinking, Maybe churches can come back to the families and if we wanted later to offer a dinner when this is all over, uh, you know what might work? I thought this too because I like both kinds of pie, remember? Hot and cold. Yeah. So maybe we could just get together and do a dessert in remembrance. I, that's just how I think. But I'm thinking we could do something about it. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, I believe that the, the purpose of memory and the gift of memory and history is so God will give us that opportunity to learn something. Do you hear what I'm saying? I think history plays an important role to show us what we ought not to do again. Do you, you get me? So, I was thinking when it came to learning and listening uh, from our past mistakes, okay? I was thinking, what, what kind of grade would we get in the United States today if they were going to grade us on that history lesson? Uh, just on a scale of 1 to 10, raise your hands if you think we're doing great. And raise your hands that the history has taught us great lessons. And we're moving forward. Okay. Oh, oh a couple of you do. Yeah. Uh, how many of you think we're about five? We need to do, we need, we've got some work to do, but we still, okay. You're more gracious than I am. I, I thought three. I thought three, when I, when I think of my life, I'm a child, I'm a product at the tail end of the boomers, the baby boomers, that is. If you've not heard of us, we are love, love children of World War II. <laughs> and we were loved. So I'm thinking, when it comes to human rights and respecting one another, and showing that we truly care for one another, I, I gave us a three. I would have given us a one, but I know that there are certain demographics in the United States that are doing wonderful work at remembering the past and helping us continue to move forward. That's my opinion. I, uh, I want to read to you a place. Uh, I'm in mean, John 18. You'll remember the story. I'm sure you will. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, so he could ask him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus, is that your, is that your own idea? Jesus asked Pilate. Or did others... Talk to you about me. Then Pilate simply says, Am I a Jew? Meaning, I'm not a Jew, okay? Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it 
you have done. And then Jesus says this to Pilate. My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to pre prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king, then, said Pilate. That's not a question in the Bible. It's a statement. You are a king, then. And Jesus says, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. And everyone on the side of truth listens to me. <laughs> and now Socrates is kicking in for us. You ready? What is truth? Pilate says. And with this, he went out again to the Jewish gathering and said, I find no basis to charge Jesus with anything. I can't find anything that he should be charged with. But it is your custom for me. Pilate's pretty quick here. He knows that he needs to keep the crowd calm because these words have deeply upset the Jews. And knowing his history, you with me? He says, I know it's your custom to release one prisoner at the time of Passover. Do you want to exercise this practice now? They shouted, they shouted yeah, yeah, we will. And, and we want you to release, what was his name? Barabbas. Oh, boy. Now, let me ask you this. Has the United States of America become such a place where people choose to use the power of a legalistic loophole to accomplish what they want instead of doing what is just and true and right in the eyes of God. I don't know about you, but I think we're leaning into loopholes way too much. That was a loophole that pilots could use to keep peace. A young 11-year-old decided that he'd take a stab at writing a song. <laughs> uh, he entitled that song, I Am the Great I Am. And it was the result of listening to a pastor talk about Moses and God when Moses was trying to pressure God into giving him his name. What's your name? Tell me. You can tell me. Come on. Surely you got a name. And God says, I, I don't have a name, really. Not one that you could <laughs> really say. And so just know that I am the great I am. Which, those of you who said Yahweh, is a translation to God saying I am. That's all you need to know. I am. Well, the preacher was me, a brilliant pastor. The songwriter was my son, Gabriel. And I want to share a verse of that song, The Wisdom. We all have the choice to find our salvation, to walk towards the light and find our way to heaven. So spend your days doing good for others, sharing love, peace, and joy. God's plan for everyone. Not because I'm his father, but I think those lyrics are brilliant. 
and they ring as true to today for me, and I hope for you, as they did the first time I heard him sing that. No matter where you're standing, on which side of the line, on any modern day social, economical, political field, I don't care. If we don't understand or begin understanding that God has to be first, we are in a world of hurt. On a human level, there are several factors that exist as we build relationship. So, relationships are grounded in self-awareness, knowing who you are, knowing your weaknesses, and knowing your strengths. Patience and tolerance is also in this equation. S.G. Talentier wrote, I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. I like that. We need a willingness to learn. Roy T. Bennett wrote, let the improvement of yourself keep you so busy that you have no time to criticize others. The great thing about building relationships is we all have the choice, as the lyric in the song went. I'm not sure we're choosing so wisely today that the other is served well because of our love for the Almighty. How will we continue if we do not, if you and I refuse to change. Listen to this prayer. You may want to chime in. I bet you know it. But listen to this prayer. It's all about building relationships. Jesus said in Matthew 6, and when you pray, when you pray, anybody here pray, just want to check. How many of you continually pray? I try to do that. I do. Thank you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the street corners. They love to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full already. That's true. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen in heaven. Then your Father, who seeks what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. And do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need, even before you ask. <laughs> and now, and now. Jesus saying this turns to us and teaches this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for is the power of the devil. 
endeavor, endeavor, endeavor. You don't think there's anything you can do? There's plenty that we have to do. I'm not preaching to the choir. I'm preaching to the army. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just to let you know, uh, we learned that WGCY was having some improvements, so they were going to have some technical issues that didn't allow us to broadcast today. Uh, this is being recorded, so we can go ahead and send it to them, and maybe they'll replay it later. We can only hope, right? But uh, I'm thankful for the ministry and everyone that uh, listens and participates in that radio ministry we have. Uh, I was able, I don't know, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Permission, yeah. And so I heard it through the grapevine and got a text that said, uh, if you wear a mask, you can sneak into the hospital. I didn't sneak. I walked right in like I owned the joint. <laughs> walked right up to the nurse's desk because I wanted to be totally transparent. And I got to visit two of our parishioners this week who are hospitalized and uh, had wonderful visits with them. And it was a blessing for me. You'll have to talk to them later to see if it was for them, OK? But, uh, the report at the hospital is, is somewhat favorable, better than it was a week ago. So thank you for your prayers for those who are in the hospitals. Other things I know about, uh, I'm praying about our trick-or-treat. Did anybody see the sign in the front yard? Hey, it looks good out there. All right. We're going to need people to make that happen. And guess who the people are? Just to let you know. Yeah. So we will have sign-up sheets and assign spots to you so you can be thinking about where you're going to set your little booth up so we can at least our area will be in somewhat of social practicing for the COVID. Okay? That's, that's all we can do, right, people? All right. I had a wonderful week this week just being with people and seeing people in Gibson City. It's a good thing they're still safe. We're so glad you're here, Gary. Let's give that a year, okay? <laughs> so, I have another successful sermon going on right here in the front pew. You're welcome. <laughs> it is good to be here, and it's good to be in the presence of God Almighty. We've been blessed this morning. We've had music. The organ music was gorgeous this morning. I don't know if you noticed it or not. I know a lot of times I come to church and I hear the music and I take it for granted. Somebody has to do that, and I am thankful for the people who are able. Singing a cappella, I am impressed. And you only dropped a half pitch during that whole thing. If you were I just thought I'd leave. I hope you've had a wonderful week. We aren't on the radio, and now you're going to see a side of me that I love to do. Do you have something you would like to lift up and share? A joy, a concern, a praise? We can do this this morning because we're not on the airwaves. Okay, are you all just so sad in your lives you got nothing to thank God for? Yes! Amen. I'm glad Eric's here too. Aren't we all? Amen. Yeah. Yes. Oh, the abundance of crops. All right. Thank you. I think for the harvest and the way things are going so far, it is really nice. I feel good when I see crops coming out of the fields. I feel good when they're going in, but I feel better when they're coming out. I don't know why. Maybe because it's good for the church. Huh. You can read into that if you want. You thankful for the one that sat next to you this morning? Look at that. I 
we thankful that we have such a beautiful place to come and worship our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, whatever that is, I know you're going to carry it in your heart. I watched this morning and I saw you with young ones, the little ones coming in. And I thought about what you had to do to get here. I think about what you had to endure to get here, you young people who have kids. Thank you. And if your grandparents doing that, you old people who endured that too. So. But aren't we blessed? Look around this congregation and see the diversity in your congregation. That's not what many Methodist churches are experiencing today. So God bless your congregation. Keep welcoming and, and doing it with open arms. You can do it, said the water boy. I believe it. Have you ever seen that movie, The Water Boy? Huh? Yeah, yeah, you can do it. I know you can, with God's help. Hey, let's pray together. I know we come this morning and it is an opportunity for us to get recharged. But I thank you for the blessing, and I don't mean this to sound egotistical at all, God, but I thank you for the blessing of making each person who they are today. Because many don't realize the blessing it is when someone else comes to church and recharges my battery. I know you are in the in and out of what we are and who we are. And I pray for all things that are about church. And they are many and diverse. As we go through this week, let us see that we are useful to you and for you and in you and allow that to be her ministry. For those who are seeking, may we be a light, a guide. For those who are grounded deeply, may we help them witness to us. For those of us who struggle and are in an arm wrestling competition with what to do and where to go, send clarity. And most of all, Help us fall in love more with Jesus. It has been a privilege and an honor to gather in your name. Thank you for claiming us and calling us yours. And it's in the strong, awesome, holy name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we so dare to pray. Amen. I will remind you once again, there is a basket out on the round table. If you are able, it sure helps our ministry. Let's say a prayer. God, I ask that the people that give and the people who need all will be blessed through the offering process. And it's in your name that we so dare to give those gifts or to receive those gifts. So thank you for allowing us time to give and receive. Amen. Well, I am at the closing hymn. It's page 701, and it is an all-time favorite of mine. If you're able to stand and tap dance or skate, whatever you need to do, we're on that. When we all get to heaven. Yeah. So let's stand and do the closing hymn.
brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray. Thank you.